uh, on this topic. Uh, the proponents of the present people's initiative blame the restrictive provisions, economic provisions of the Constitution for the low foreign direct investments, the high unemployment, and the slow economic growth of our country. These are all false reasons. The Philippines today has one of the most liberal foreign investment laws in ASEAN, as well as in Asia. The Philippines, without amending the Constitution, has passed several laws to open the economy to 100% foreign ownership. The recently amended Public Service Act reclassified several businesses as public services open to 100% foreign ownership. Local banks are open to 100% foreign, foreign ownership under Republic Act 10641. Retail trade is open to 100% foreign ownership under the amended Republic Act 8762, subject, of course, to reasonable minimum requirements on capital. And the generation of renewable energy, solar and wind, has just been opened to 100% foreign ownership under the DOE circular amending the IRR of Republic Act 1995-13, so it's not even a law. In particular, the amended Public Service Act allows 100% foreign ownership in telecommunications, air, sea, and land transportation, except PUVs, and airports. Power generation has always been open to 100% foreign ownership for the longest time. There appears to be a lack of understanding by our national leaders of the extent of foreign ownership under the law of businesses in our country. In an interview, President Marcos Jr. declared that he wants to open the economy to foreign investments, and I quote, except in critical areas such as power generation. Power generation from coal, coal oil, and gas plants has been open to 100% foreign ownership for the longest time. The Supreme Court has also allowed 100% foreign ownership of power generation from dams or hydropower plants. President Marcos Jr.'s own Department of Justice and Department of Energy have recently allowed, through a mere implementing guideline, 100% foreign ownership of power generation from solar and wind, which is, as natural resources are under the Constitution, owned by the state. Let us compare the foreign investment laws of the Philippines, China, and Vietnam on telecommunications. Under the amended Public Service Act, foreigners can own now 100% of telecom companies in the Philippines. China at present only allows 49% foreign ownership in landline and cellular phone companies. Vietnam also allows only 49% foreign ownership in landline and cellular phone companies. On land ownership, let us look at our neighbors, China and Vietnam. Even their own citizens cannot own land. Their own citizens can own only a leasehold for 75 years. In Thailand, foreigners cannot own land. But there is a small exception, up to 1,600 1, uh, square meters. But only if there is a treaty with another country allowing Thai, Thai people to buy land in that other country. And there is no such treaty at present. So in Thailand, foreigners cannot own land. In Indonesia, foreigners cannot own land. They can only acquire a leasehold. So at, we are better because we allow a corporation 40% owned by foreigners to own land. And Frankly, land ownership is not, is not a requirement for investors to invest in a country. If you are a manager, you're sent to the Philippines and you recommend to your board in New York that you should buy the land on which your plant is going to be built, you will be fired because you don't have to spend that much to use the land. You need only 25 year lease and you don't want more than 25 year lease because in 25 years, the labor situation might change. The labor in the Philippines could be more expensive than the next country. So they don't want to buy land actually, foreign investors who are engaged in manufacturing. Now, to add, what, what is the real problem of our, of our law FDI? There are three causes. First, the high cost of power. We have the highest power rate in ASEAN and the second highest power rate in Asia, next only to Japan. In manufacturing, energy accounts for at least 30% of your cost. And if you locate your plant here in the Philippines, you cannot compete with your competitor in Vietnam because they have low power rates. They will never come to the Philippines. So we have to address this number one problem. The second problem is our bureaucratic regulation. To put up a factory, 
you have to in the Philippines you have to get a permit from the barangay from the mayor from the department uh, in charge of the business you are in and the specialized agency that may also regulate you in Vietnam and China you go only to one office and you get all your permits the third cause of uh, the law FDI is our infrastructure our infrastructure is behind our neighbors our airports, seaports, land transportation, three trans sea transportation. We have to address the real causes. The real cause is not the constitution. Nobody cares. The president has been going abroad and has been saying, I have secured almost uh, 500 billion pesos in foreign investment. And not one of those uh, foreigners who plan to invest here required an amendment of our constitution. That is all, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the opportunity to present my position.